So you're starring as Mac Morris in the all-new Saved by the Bell reboot, which is fantastic, such a cool project to be a part of. He's the son of Zach and Kelly, two incredibly iconic characters. So like I said, this is truly an iconic character because you're coming from two really amazing people that everyone's really heard of. So tell me a little bit about Mac and his character. Um, Mac is, I think, very similar to Zach, but also in a very different way. I think that their roots are similar, but of course, with my dad being governor, you know, I do come from a lot of privilege and kind of a abundance of attention. Um, and most of the things I do prank wise and, you know, being the king of the school and kind of being this ladies man and all of that comes from a place of really just trying to get attention from my dad. Um, because I do want to fill his shoes and I want to kind of live up to that Morris name that has a legacy around it. Absolutely. I could totally see that. Tell me a little bit about the reboot in general. How does it differ from the original Saved by the Bell? What's the plot like? Um, it's funny because Tracy Wingfield, our showrunner, actually doesn't like calling it a reboot because it is this completely new version of it. So, you know, it is the structure of Bayside, but I think people are going to be really surprised when they see, you know, how the show was written and how it flows and how it films because um, it is kind of a Bayside 2.0. You know, it is in the modern world, so there's modern references. Um, it's multicam, so, you know, it's not, it's not as, um, I guess, comedic in some standpoint, because we're touching on subjects with the Douglas kids coming in of, you know, multiple societal conversations that need to be had. Tell me about those conversations. What pressing issues do you guys kind of touch on in this? A lot of it's, you know, with the schooling system of underfunded schools versus very, you know, you call them privileged schools and kind of how they differ in resources of, you know, underfunded schools do not get the resources, therefore they are behind, you know, in a very kind of inherent way that just is not fair. And then when they come to the new school, you know, they see the resources that we all have and all the Bayside kids have. And just the fact that we take that for granted where at the end of the day, that's a luxury. Definitely. How did you prepare, how did you, how did you prepare to play Mac? What was your process like? Um, Mac was a fun one because I, I didn't I actually didn't watch the original because I didn't want to copy anything that, that Mark Paul Gossler did because um, he did such a good job and I do not feel like I'm filling shoes I feel like I'm kind of making my own um, so really it was just to take you know the words that our writers room did and Tracy Wigfield and, and kind of use my imagination to it and just kind of let it run. I really love that kind of paving your own way mindset I feel like that's what a lot of people need to have what was it like working with the original cast? You know, I don't think that's a really cool thing to say that you worked with the whole original Saved by the Bell cast. What was that dynamic like on set? They were so loving and, and had, you know, open arms to kind of bring us in and, and show us what they know from the original. Um, but they didn't dictate anything. and They didn't try to pressure us into doing anything. And they really let us, you know, kind of have freedom within the limitations of Bayside. Um, and they were just excited for what we were doing with it, which I think was the coolest part. I think so too, that is really cool. Did you face any challenges while filming or during this project? What were they? Um, I, this was kind of my first big comedic project in some standpoint. Um, so I actually, you know, when you're doing a series that's very comedic, there's a certain structure to it. And I think learning how Tracy's writing flowed and, and how, you know, it was set up, set up joke and those kind of dynamics. I think that took a little bit for me to kind of get my head around because I am so used to doing film number one and drama number two. And so kind of stepping into this comedic world, I, I learned so much about acting and, and TV and, you know, the dynamic with another actor when you're doing something comedic. Um, there was, there's so many lessons learned. That's so cool. Now you have that whole perspective and mindset, which I think is awesome. Saved by the Bell is such an iconic show. Everyone absolutely loves it. I'm sure everyone's heard of it. What do you kind of want viewers to interpret and take away from this newest version? Version. What would you say the message of it is? I think the big takeaway from the whole series is kind of the fact of what, how we can all help each other. I think there's a dynamic of with the Douglas kids coming into the school. Um, you know, the Bayside kids do have more privilege. And I think throughout the whole series, part of the arc is the fact that the Bayside kids find that they can use their own resources in a way that is not self-indulgent. And we can all help each other um, to kind of bring each other higher. I think that's a big takeaway. Absolutely. Tell me about your audition process. What kind of drew you to this project? Um, I had a pretty like normal audition process. I got, you know, got the casting notice from my agents and team and 
Um, I got it in Atlanta and LA. And then I got callbacks on both. And then I switched all over to LA and then I went in for a callback and then we did two screen tests. Um, and then I was actually on my way to New Mexico to film a movie and I got the call saying I got it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the draw to it was just the fact that it is such a legendary show, number one, and number two, Tracy Wigfield, our showrunner, has an incredible writing resume and has an incredible style as well with 30 Rock. Um, so I knew it was going to be new and fresh and kind of funky and fun. Absolutely. Watching the series back, do you have any favorite moments? What are you most excited for viewers to see? Ooh, there's so many little things. I mean, if you watch the original, you know, there's eggs throughout the whole series. If, if you're new to it, I think just the dynamic of the conversations that sometimes are funny with, you know, kids combining from completely different cultures and circumstances. Um, you know, they are heavy subjects, but I think a lot of the times the comedy comes out of it just due to, I guess, kind of the sort of ignorance and blindness that an abundance of privilege can bring. 100%. You're also starring in a five-part anthology film. It's called After Masks, and you guys kind of worked together to write that during quarantine. Tell me a little bit about that. That's so interesting. Um, After, Max, After Masks was a really, really fun project because number one, we all were in this modern world of Zoom and all of that. Um, but I think creativity is kind of a lifeline. And so it was this amazing group of people that came together and had a bunch of different ideas and story form of kind of what they were going through emotionally, physically, spiritually. And we all kind of came together to make this project of six stories, not about an actual pandemic going on, but about kind of what we go through as humans being locked up in kind of being by ourselves and in the project I think is so important to watch because I think it is relatable. I think people will watch it. And, you know, now that we're going into possibly a second lockdown, I've heard so many people say this is kind of a second chance. Um, and I think that's so interesting because I think okay. we kind of dissect the original one of all the things we want to do and achieve, but then, you know, isolation does bring certain things that come up that you don't expect. So I think having conversations on that is a, is a really cool thing and Aftermasks does a beautiful job of it. Tell me about the plot of it. What's that like? There's actually not, there's a log line. Um, so I'm the narrator and I wrote the log line. So there's one kind of throughout log line that brings the viewer in. Um, but the whole plot of it is, you know, just touching on different circumstances. So there's six different stories, short stories throughout the whole film um, that, you know, flow together through the log line. And each of those touch on, you know, grief, isolation, shame, um, you know, past trauma that comes up when you are alone for a mass amount of time. Um, so the plot, I, I don't think there's one plot that you can kind of put your finger on. I think the viewer has to dictate that. That's beautiful. Tell me a little bit about your writing process for that. Do you see more writing in your future? I would absolutely love to write. Um, you know, it's funny because going into the industry, you know, I was obsessed with acting. And then once I started working on sets, I was always so curious about being behind the camera and then being behind the camera and, you know, making relationships with DPs and directors and seeing how they talk about film, which helps acting at the end of the day. And then, you know, having my family be writers. And so kind of being like, well, I know, I know how to write. So why not just transfer that to screenwriting? And kind of indulging in that over quarantine and really figuring that out makes me want to go into that much, much farther. And I think that's definitely in the future. Absolutely. Circling back to Saved by the Bell, did you kind of feel some sort of pressure? You know, this is um, a new version of such a, such a well-renowned show. Did you kind of feel some pressure there? With kind of I feel like the pressure came once we started filming a little bit, but going into it, not really because I wasn't born when it aired. Um, so I, you know, I didn't, I knew it was this cultural phenomenon, but I didn't know the weight of it and how many people really paid attention to it. So then once we started filming and, you know, the word got out that we were cast as these characters, seeing people kind of come in flocks of, of saying how much they appreciate it, I think then put a little bit of pressure on, but it was never to the point where it was hindering. Definitely. 
You're also starring in the new thriller Freaky. Tell me a little bit more about your role in that. That's a fun one. Um, I mean, Blumhouse, all of their productions are absolutely incredible. Um, the whole cat, I mean, that's, that movie is so much fun because it is horror, but it's also this comedy and having Vince Vaughn on set and Catherine Newton, it's, they have to play technically two characters because they swap and seeing that dynamic and in the way it was written and directed and on set, it was this, it was very collaborative. You know, it wasn't, you know, the actor does what he does and director does what he does. Everybody would kind of go into a room and be like, okay, how can we make this shot different? Like, let's, let's do this and this and this. And so it was just this collaborative process. And that was, that was such a fun film to be a part of. I love that. Last but certainly not least, what's coming up next for you? What can we expect to see in the future? Um, so I have Conjuring, um, Conjuring 3 coming out cool. um, sometime in 2020. It keeps, of course, due to the times, you know, it keeps getting delayed. Um, but then there's also a couple of films in the docket that I can't really say much about. Um, and then I have a production company called The Collective. And so we're producing different things and I'm dipping my hand into producing um, then I'm also, people don't know this yet, but I'm also very, very into fashion. Um, so I'm, I'm looking to kind of dip my hand into some fashion projects coming up with some different artists and, and really just meet, meet new people and meet new creative people and inspire me. That's so exciting. I'm so excited to see what you do. Thank you so much for joining me today, Mitchell. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited for everyone to see Safe by the Bell. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. You as well.